So in this video, I'm going to go over some of my very top tips on how to score the best stuff. Even if you've never been to an auction before and you were terrified, I'm going to help you through it. <laughs> If you are a thrift shopper, antique lover, vintage reseller, or just overall collector and you're not going to auctions, you're completely missing out. Some of my very coolest stuff that I've gotten that I've had for years that I will never ever part with, you know, has come from auctions. I'm telling you, they are such a wonderful place to find really great, unique items for your home. And not only that, find really unique things with value. So back in the day when I got my first home and I, you know, I was barely making minimum wage, but I loved antiques. I always have. I would go to garage sales and estate sales and auctions were primarily where I found a lot of the pieces for my home. And they were so fun. I was, I think I was about 18 years old when I first started going with my mom. You know, I'd go with 50 bucks in my pocket and I'd come home with this really like beat up old dresser that I'd refinish and I'd flip it later on Craigslist. And eventually when I had my own antique booth, it was a really great place for me to kind of source all of my items. So like I was saying, if you were a vintage reseller auctions are such a wonderful place for you to kind of gather your product and find really unique things. I've always been a lover of antiques and just sitting at these auction houses and going before the auction even starts to look, touch and feel and see what a real antique is, is super, super helpful, especially if you want to get into the world of collecting or vintage reselling just as an education piece for yourself. It's amazing. So most auctions, they'll provide you with a catalog, whether it's online or it's in person, like the catalogs used to be like this nice paper little booklet and each item would be numbered and tell you a little bit about what each item is. So as things are lined out on the tables, you can kind of follow along with your catalog and see, okay, this is an art deco lamp and this is a reproduction one over here. You can learn how to spot the difference between like true antiques and reproduction things. And this is also a really wonderful spot to learn about value as well. So at most auction houses, you will learn about like the local value, which might be a little bit different than um, say if something is broadcast online because you have a lot of different bidders coming into things to like boost the value of things. But it's wonderful to kind of get your brain like keyed and turned on to how much people are willing to bid on these things. Cause it's always exciting when all these hands are going up and somebody wants something in a box. You're like, what is it? You know, I was once behind this guy at a auction where he was right in front of me and there was a guy across the room and they're both bidding on this box of junk. It was like a shoe box of like, look like somebody emptied out a, a desk drawer and they just like dump post-its in there and old pins and stamps and all these like just rubber bands. It's like, why are they bidding on this box? And this little box went for like $300. Good grief. Who's going to pay that for a box of junk, right? But this guy knew what was in it. And apparently there was some super fancy uh, ink pen in there. He told me that was worth about $3,000. So you do have to know what you're looking at, but that's the neat thing about going to these auctions because there are collectors of different things all around you, you know, so you can really learn from them and ask questions. It's a great place to not only meet people, but kind of expand your horizons of things that you might want to keep your eye out for, you know, like if you're going to garage sales and estate sales and other auctions to know what is valuable to pick up for yourself. All right, let's jump into bidding at an auction. I want to tell you some of my little tricks of like where to sit, how to bid, don't do this, make sure you do that. Preview day is a wonderful thing because you can kind of take your time and you're not caught up in the hype of the actual auction day. Because if you've never been to an auction before, they're really exciting. Like they get your adrenaline pumping and everyone's looking at things and it's loud and there's stuff everywhere. <laughs> it's really, really fun. So when they do a preview day, that's typically when an 
auction house is open prior to the auction. You can walk in, check things out, you can touch things. Sometimes the auctioneer will be there and there's always staff there so you can ask questions about the different items. And most of the time they're happy to explain things, let you touch things, see them. You can measure stuff if you're there to buy a piece of furniture for your home. It's a really great time to kind of look at everything and get a good idea of how much you want to bid for something before you get into all the hype. It's kind of like this calm quiet before the auction storm. So that catalog that they give you is a really great little diary, like a little notepad for you to use. So when I would go around and look at things before bidding, I would always take little notes on things like, you know, if I saw a dresser, I might be like, oh, the drawer needs a fix in, you know, like don't forget that. And maybe the picture frame has like some cracking in it or something like that, that you don't want to forget that you're going to be overstimulated. Let me just tell you, there's going to be a lot to see when you go to an auction. So it's always good to take little notes. But most importantly, it's really good to take notes on what you're willing to bid up to. You don't want to get caught up in the bidding war. I've seen people do that before. I once saw a husband and wife bid against each other. Yes. So it's good not to get caught up in this stuff. The wife was sitting over here. The husband was standing over there and they were both completely unaware of each other and they were bidding on the same item. So they were jacking up the bid. You know, it's like they were just getting caught up in the hype, not, not realizing where each other was. And it was like, man, I don't think either one of them actually won that auction. <laughs> So don't get caught up in the hype. So, but for me, it's kind of the opposite. I would always get intimidated. Like if a lot of people are bidding on something, I'd be like, oh, I don't, I don't want to get in the fight, you know? <laughs> I don't want to be throwing elbows. But I, I also would kick myself later and it's like, really, you lost that auction over 20 bucks, you know, or whatever it was. So you don't want to get in intimidated to where you forget to bid on something that you really like. When you have that catalog out and you're in a clear state of mind, <laughs> write down how much you're willing to bid up to and give yourself a little bit of grace. What I realized, this is kind of a little, like a psychological tip. I think you, you might know this if you've gone to auctions, but if you just sit back and you're not bidding, you can kind of see people's, you know, like poker, how they say it's like a poker face or your tell. So in auctions, people will always have like a breaking point. Say uh, their breaking point is $50 or $100. Like everybody has this like little increment in their mind. If you can go beyond their breaking points and say you bid at 110, they're like, oh no, I went past my $100 limit and they'll just stop. You know what I mean? And they're going to be kicking themselves that they lost the thing over 10 bucks and you won. <laughs> Where to sit in the auction house. This is an important thing also that I don't think many people think about. So when I first started, I wanted to sit like in the back because I didn't want people to like, like look at me bid. I was just like, I wanted to be a little like mouse in the corner bidding, but that's not a good place to be. You want the auctioneer to like see you, you know? We're connected here. Make sure you have good eye contact with the auctioneer or auction staff when you are bidding. Not all auction houses will give you like a paddle like you see on TV. Most times you're just raising your hand and you might have like a bidder card with a number on it. So you might wave that, but most of the time you're just waving your hand and you tell them your auction number or you might go like this. I was once at an auction house and the auctioneer and I were so connected. I didn't even go like this anymore. I just did one of these. <laughs> I was like, I'm in the auction club now. <laughs> I don't even have to raise my arm. Make sure you make good eye contact with the auctioneer. Don't be telling stories in the audience and waving your hand. First of all, it's rude. You need to be paying attention to all the goodies coming up. Most of all, you don't want to accidentally bid on something that you don't want. So you don't be raising your hand. If you're one of those people that like to talk with your hands, you just sit on them for, <laughs> for the auction, okay? So if you are bidding on an item, I think if you're an auctioneer watching this, you might appreciate this tip. But if you are bidding, bidding on an item and maybe you, you do tap out on a number and you're like, okay, I'm not, I'm not going up any higher. And you just sit there and you don't bid anymore. The auctioneer is still looking at you because you were bidding, right? So he's looking at you and he's looking at the bidder up, looking at you, looking at the bidder up. And he's waiting for you to raise your hand. So as a courtesy to the auctioneer, I'm telling you, this will pay you back later. As a courtesy to the auctioneer, you just shake your head no or go like this, that you're out and let them know that you're done so they can move on and continue on with business instead of waiting for you that they're not going to get a bid out of. I'm, I guarantee you, if you do that, you're going to be friends with the auctioneer. One of my favorite platforms that I just discovered for online bidding is Fellows Auction House. Fellows is based over in the UK, but they have free worldwide shipping. They do have some terms on their shipping, but most things, especially like jewelry and handbags and stuff, they all ship 
free. So I thought that was really cool because you need to remember like when you're bidding on things, especially bidding online, there can be a buyer's premium and then the shipping costs can kind of add up. So the fact that they do have free shipping is a lot of savings right there. I just got these really, really pretty vintage real gold earrings from one of their auctions. I thought these were so gorgeous because the design, it looked like something really soft and feminine and almost like a Renaissance Baroque type of feel. So my earrings came with a maintenance kit. This is a little jewelry wipe kit here. And this is like the same stuff that I use to clean my antique jewelry pieces here at home. I have like a solution by the same brand and I love this stuff. So this has little like polishing cloths in here, which are wonderful. They're like a little velvety polishing cloth that's perfect for wiping down chains or getting any kind of lotions or oils off of your jewelry pieces. Love these. And a little diamond dazzler stick, which sounds super fun. This has like a little brush on the end and like a cleaning solution. So it's perfect to get off any kind of uh, hand lotions or any oils that you might get in on any of your gemstone rings. I also thought this was really cool it's a little pamphlet that came with my order and it has a little tips in here on different jewelry and watches i thought this was neat kind of teaches you how to identify different types of rings and what the names of each type of stone is called if you buy a ring or a necklace or some kind of jewelry item they'll test all of their stones and they guarantee the authenticity of designer handbags they have some really beautiful ones on there there's like a vintage louis bag that i kind of want someday but i'm like i'm too cheap to pay full retail, I want a good deal. So I got registered on their website and it's so easy to do that nowadays. You just register your debit card and like email address and stuff to get pre-registered for an upcoming auction. That way you can save certain items. So like if there's a handbag or a pair of earrings that you have your eye on, you can save it in your favorites and it'll send you a reminder when that item is coming up for bid. You do not want to forget, I'm telling you, like those things haunt you if you forget. <laughs> All of their items are sold pre-love. I'm kind of keeping an eye out for maybe another beautiful oil painting for my gallery wall. <sighs> Wouldn't that be neat to get something like from the UK? I don't know. <laughs> like, I, do you have a fantasy about that? I know most of my viewers are based here in America and we all dream about like going picking over in Europe for antiques. So this is kind of a fun virtual way to do that. Oh my gosh, this is one of my very favorite pieces that I've ever purchased at auction. This cherub baby end table is kind of all the things that dreams are made of. This is one of the pieces that I almost got intimidated about though. These two guys were bidding on these as well. They had a matching coffee table that I totally got intimidated on and regret, but there it was hot, you know? It was like me and the guys bidding against these. I do have one on the other side of the bed as well, but I ended up getting them for $150. Can you believe that at auction? These are one of my very first splurges that I ever got as a new homeowner, and they're so beautiful. I love the pink marble top. This is just something that you don't see very often. And all this beautiful like pastel painting is so romantic. It's got little cherry babies on each of the legs. This is a piece that uh, when we've moved, I pack it personally in my car because I would just be heartbroken if these little babies ever got broken or got their, got their knees bruised. <laughs> but definitely one of my favorite auction finds. So most of the things I like, other people think are hideous. It's, it's really a wonderful way to live because you can get some good deals that way. <laughs> this lamp came from auction as well. I remember being with my parents years ago and there was this auction full of all of these amazing antique lamps. And this was one of them. My parents had it in their house for years and I've always been in love with it. It's just so pretty. I think it's an Italian piece and I love the little cherub baby on it. It's got this woman with her arms up elegant and this is a really really heavy painted iron lamp it's very very heavy and my dad's done some repairs to it the paint's a little bit chippy on it but i think that kind of adds to the vintage charm i just love this piece all right you could pretty much find anything from kitchen appliances clothing heavy farm equipment animals 
plants for your yard, you name it, at auction, it pretty much exists. And one of my favorite places to find real artwork is actually at auctions. I found some great oil paintings and also some really beautiful like signed lithographs and you just never know what's out there. This is one of my very favorite paintings that I purchased pre-loved. <laughs> this is like a painting of really pretty, it's an oil on board, white peonies. It's just something you don't really see very often. I thought this was really, really beautiful. There was a little bit of damage here. Something looks like it kind of dripped on there. So I'm gonna have to do some research on how to like properly clean or restore an oil painting. But it was such a beautiful piece. It's in the original frame. It's signed by the artist. And it's something that I know nobody else has. Back when I used to do flea markets, when I'd sell at flea markets and had me antique booth, I used to shop for a lot of my merchandise at auctions. And I would really find some incredible lamps because those were always a wonderful seller in the winter months in my antique space. This one has a funny story. So I had this in my antique booth. Gosh, it seemed like an eternity. I don't know, it was like three or four months. But you know, if you have an antique booth of something sitting in there that long, it feels like forever. And then you feel like, did I make the right purchase? Is this ugly? Does nobody want it? And so nobody wanted it. I had it in my booth forever. And I don't even think I was asking that much for it, but I was like, man, I don't want to give it away. So I paid $20 for this auction. This is an Italian Florentine piece. And I've seen these on that website first dibs before for around like 600 bucks. So I really got a great buy on it, I'd say for $20. It has really beautiful crystals on it. They're super hard to dust though, but it's just like a really pretty little nightlight. It has this like soft little embery glows of these tiny little frosted bulbs on here. And I love that it kind of fits in with my more like romantic and whimsical type of look that I really love. So it's just kind of funny. This thing wasn't meant to, to be sold to anybody else. It was supposed to come home with me. <laughs> All right, so we've all got that one thing, you know, that keeps us going out thrifting every weekend and going to garage sales and these auctions, you know, like that one really awesome item that like started it all. And for me, it's this glorious chair baby mirror. I went to this auction and I didn't even preview it, but when I walked in the doors, I saw this glorious gold mirror. I was like, oh man, I have to have that. It's so beautiful. I'd never seen anything like it. You know, I was like, oh man. So I'm just sitting there. My mom knew how much I wanted it to. And I just knew it was gonna go high. And I was like preparing myself, you know, for the worst. My mom's like, well, you never know. She's just like, you know, set your price in your mind. And like I was telling you, don't get intimidated. You know, don't get scared to bid just because someone else is bidding too. And it ended up going for $40. I'm like, are you kidding me? Things like this exist for $40? So this mirror was one of the very, very first things that like started my auction going bug for me because I, I just couldn't believe I could score such beauty for $40. And like I was telling you earlier, like I like things that I think most people don't and they think are really ugly. And in this case, it worked out for me. This is probably one of the oldest items that I've ever purchased and this, I hope I'm saying the word right, but this is a part of a garandola. It's an Italian three-piece trio. I have the other two pieces downstairs. This is one of the probably the very fanciest things that I've ever purchased in my life. This piece has all of these really beautiful, long, long etched crystals on them. And if you flip them around, it's really interesting because the design is only done on the front and it's very, very thin and the backside is completely plain and flat. So these were all meant to be either facing a wall or on top of a mantle. And the other two pieces I have are like single candle holders. So it's pretty rare to find them as the complete trio. So when you do see things at auction that come up and you see something in a, in a matching pair or a full set, there is some value in that so don't forget when you're bidding like keep those things all in mind and you know always jump on things if something is weird and kind of different and you're like wow I feel like this is special trust that intuition that picker inside of you that intuition inside of you that feeling because those feelings will always serve you right you know back when I was selling pieces in my antique booth things that I thought were kind of strange or different or that I was really excited about those pieces were always the first things to sell for me this rug is a 
recent acquisition and I did pay a couple pretty pennies for it, but I do think that if you're going to have something for the long term and if it's something that you've really been searching for a long time, I think that price is justified. And this is one of those pieces for me. I've been searching for a beautiful rug for my dressing room for quite some time. And one of my amazing subscribers, her name's Rebecca, she works at an auction house not too far away. And she said, you know what? I have this beautiful rug coming up for auction and it looks like exactly like what you want and it's just magnificent. So this is a 1940s Tabriz Persian rug and it's a cashmere and silk blend. It feels like a dream. It has a really nice soft low pile on it. All of the original fringe is still intact. It's just in beautiful condition. I did a little bit of research on Tabriz rugs and what was really interesting is the actual design of it with this medallion piece. So this centerpiece is supposed to depict a full moon and these kind of petal-like pieces represent the scales of a fish that would rise up to the surface of the water to admire the full moon. So I just think that is really, really beautiful. And I love the symbolism and I love the color palette in this. Even though it is a Persian rug, it kind of has a French-like feel to me with like the pretty urns of flowers around it. And just this entire color palette I thought was really, really romantic. And um, auction houses, man, I feel like every like, state auction I've ever been to has some great rugs. So if if you're a collector or you're wanting to get an antique rug for your house, it's a wonderful spot to look. If you haven't seen my bathroom like renovation makeover video, I totally recommend you checking that out. I did feature this little cabinet in there that I got in an auction. So this was an antique like clock carcass. The entire clock works were all gone, but I got this for $5 at an auction. They thought it was complete garbage, but for me, I was like, you know, someday I'm gonna use that for something. The shape was so beautiful, but it made for the perfect little medicine cabinet. So I just put a little shelf in there and I've got all of our bathroom goodies in there. It's just a wonderful, wonderful place to find really, really good bargains too. My favorite auctioneer has since retired, but I have some wonderful memories there with my parents and just, you know, finding some amazing treasures. And then most of all, learning about pieces and seeing things in person. He was just such a character and had all these stories. He's an awesome guy. I got this light fixture from his spot. And for years, he had this above the register and he had all these like chandeliers and all these antique pieces just globbed up hanging above the register. And I was all always afraid to like ask how much is that, you know, cause he had this kind of a little bit of a retail spot at the register and you could just straight up, you know, buy pieces that he's accumulated from estates. I'd go up, I'd pay for my thing and I'd be standing at the register looking up at this beauty. And I finally had the nerve to ask cause I was like, I, you're gonna miss out and somebody else is gonna get that thing, you know, if you don't ask. So I finally asked Dale, I said, you know what? I love that light fixture and I've been looking at it for years. So I was like, how much is it? So I ended up getting it for $300. It's a true antique French one. All of the wires are all hand beaded and hand wrapped. I did get it professionally rewired for our house, but I packed this around, gosh, I think for like five years. And I said, you know, someday I'm gonna have a real Victorian house that I'm gonna be able to hang this light fixture into. And here we are in our entry and it's such, it's such a weird, cool piece, but it really works for us because we live in the Pacific Northwest and you do see elk here. I, although I think these might be moose. What do you think? <laughs> All right, well, I hope you had fun in this video. Please comment below and let me know if you've ever shopped at an auction yourself and what's the coolest thing you've ever scored at one. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. I do lots of videos on thrifting and home decorating and just playing in the garden and I will see you in the next one.